Happy Monday, everybody. It's your boy Jumpman Jones. You're not live inside episode 100, uh, 237 Ooh. of the Kicking Shit Podcast. Yeah, we're setting back 100 episodes. Joining me today, joining me today is some of the user suspects behind the camera. <laughs> it is D. What's going on? What's up? How you doing back there? To my right, it's my f- boy. It's the funny. It's the talented. Young Picasso, your motherfucking super. This gels, a.k.a. Jelly. Put me on the bread until I am fed. It's my man's James, comedian, Jellyfish. What's going on, my brother? <laughs> I'm in the mood, a.k.a. You got to create. create. Yeah, man, I feel like you it's got to do something with my ensembles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'll be putting some ensembles on this Not episode. ensembles. Would you want to be called the ensemblist? I don't know. You might have to call me... The Fresh Dawn or some oh, shit. God. Okay. I don't know. I'll be putting some pieces together. Come on, come up with it, man. We, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll implement. We'll implement. Because that jelly puts you on bread. And you let, that shit, that, that shit, shit do go. Bells, that, shit go. that shit go. That shit go. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that shit go. Um, Johnny is not here today. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Uh, shout out to everybody <laughs> <laughs> who watched <laughs> episode 236 of Kickers Your Podcast. Thank you. Uh, if you listen to this right now, you can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud. And if you're watching right now, we're only on YouTube for the visuals. So go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment. Other than that, man, how you doing? How your week going? How everybody doing? What's going on? No, oh, I thought I had fuzz on. Yeah, nah, ensemblist. Yeah, I ain't got no fuzz <laughs> on me. We good, we good. Yeah. All right, yeah. The ensemblist. I like that. Ensemblist. How you doing, man? How you been? Yeah, I'm good. You know, long week, but you know, I made it through through the graces of God. God. You know. Did shout you out know? shout out my family, man. You know, pray up to them. Okay. You know. And uh shout out my people at work holding it down, making this money. And uh shout out to you, man, adjusting the mic. I <laughs> <laughs> get me right. Good God. Uh, D, you good? Back to how your week? I'm good, I'm good. It was actually pretty damn busy. All I right. don't know why, but it got busy uh, towards the end of the week. So, yeah. But I respect it. All right, man. Oh, uh, well, you niggas have nothing invigorating to say. No, no, Not no. honestly. Not the weather all. sucked this week. Like it was so damn foggy yeah, gloomy, all week. Man. Like it's nap weather. Take a nap. Yeah, it didn't it really encourage me to in do something. North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> it and they like tell me it always rains. It seems like it's Southern been like two, North three weeks Carolina. straight. It's been it's, raining. It's just the rain. Rain, I'm okay with. It's the damn fog. Oh, yeah. Uh, like I fog. like the fog. I, I like, don't mind the fog. I like but the fog. Not everyone can drive in the fog. That's uh, very true. Yeah, yeah. That is so very true. Yeah, that's the thing. That's you, the thing. Yeah, you dealing with a lot of people that. Are not familiar with how to drive and maneuver when the fog like, hits. I feel like there's a mixture of people, of drivers in North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? Because you got your Charlotte drivers, then out of nowhere you got some New York drivers, then you might have some Virginia drivers down here, then you might have some God knows where drivers. You know what I'm saying? But I know them the main three: Charlotte, Virginia, and New York. That's and, down here. And everybody drives different in those respective areas. And South Carolina drivers. You got your South Carolina drivers here. True. People from Virginia driver. drive just like they in the country. These niggas don't give a damn. Everything off road to them. I feel like <laughs> South Carolina the same way. Yeah. New, New York. Miles and miles of back road. New York drivers drive like they in traffic. All the time. All the time. <laughs> hey, you're like, so move. It's only two cars, bro. Like, chill. <laughs> chill. Like, what are you doing? Them niggas ain't used to wide open spaces. Nah. Nah. <laughs> And they shit will ride crazy. your butt because they don't know what else to do. Yeah, yeah man. Shit, wow. Like, nobody on the road but me and you, bro. Like, chill. I ain't uh, used to that. All right, well, man. Listen, dog. Um, starting the week off in politics, man. Brittany Griner was released from the Russian penal colony. Now, when you say penal colony, because they said she was, lo- she was locked up with a dude that she used to eat breakfast with. So I was like, she was... In there with guys? I don't, I didn't, I don't, I don't know. Somebody tap that ass. What? That's a tall drink of water to be coming in there. I got 20 years. No problem. I ain't gonna try that big tree. I'm gonna climb that tree. Fuck that. Okay. All right, man. uh, Go night, night, nigga. (laughs) (laughs) That shit crazy. 
Brittany Griner's release negotiations finally ended. Uh, they didn't include Paul Whelan. They, ain't, they didn't include the other Russian guy we spoke about on here, but uh, Victor Bout is released, man. Um, yeah, man, this nigga, nigga they Supreme got Victor Bout out um, the merchant in exchange of for Brittany. Uh, of course, her family, her friends, teammates, everybody happy to see her home. Yeah. But I didn't expect the mixed reviews. Yeah, because um, there's people locked up still, like, you know what I'm saying, POW type shit going on. Yeah, I didn't think it would be, like, the mixed reviews. I it was It's weird to see the back end of this because when she was locked up, everybody's like, nah, that's not right. You know, get her out. She got to come home. But then they made the trade. They got her home, and you're like, "Hold on, dog. How you gonna release the merchant of death, though?" Like, I mean, <laughs> I think Putin should have definitely let old buddy go. No, you know what I'm saying. No. You don't think so? I mean, he was a spy, though. You no. know what I'm saying. We call no, a spy. No, 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 no. And how in the hell you a spy? No. You spying on Russia? What the hell going on? Because he was going to let them go had they included the Iranian guy that they wanted. They wanted an Iranian guy who worked for the Russian government that the U.S. has. Who was it? What he I do? can't. I, I had to go back in our episodes and listen. But these um, niggas wanted two super villains they, for a bag of chips. They definitely did. But they got one super <laughs> villain. They got one super villain for a bag of chips. They got no one, disrespect to Brittany Ground. I'm glad she home. You know what I'm saying? Just nah. made for a good joke. But honestly, though, it's it's just wild how we're trading prisoners now. What the fuck is going on? This is like the craziest game of Pokemon Go you ever wanted to see. <laughs> <laughs> Only with real villains, though. This shit is crazy. So when I'm looking at the backlash from it, not only from the American side, I sent uh, to the group a video because from the Russian side, this kind of makes America look weak. We traded uh, a basketball player and... You know, this is a worldly view, not a, a American view, but more so a worldly view. We traded a celebrity for a arms dealer. The same way we welcome Britney home with open arms, they're happy to have Victor home. Yeah. Like, they're happy to have one of their own home. Yeah. Somebody who we villainized in our culture as the quote-unquote merchant of death. They like, yo, we got our mans back. Like, So he he's really, like, back out on the streets, almost like uh, Bumpy Johnson getting released. All oh, the yeah. plenty of times yeah, he's look, been released. Look, knock on wood. Soviet Union get back together. That was the last piece right there. Okay. <laughs> Not going wood, man. Y'all just gave that nigga the whole. It's... I don't. I don't think he's a major piece. I just think that's a. I think that trade was symbolic. I think what they did for uh, Britney was symbolic, and it also turned up the pressure on the Biden administration. Oh yeah. To start getting out more prisoners, because I mean, honestly, we making a joke of. You traded this for a bag of chips, but truly, that's what you that's did. That's exactly mm -hmm. what you did. Cause they you tried got... to get Victor. I think Russia tried to get Victor a few years ago. I can't remember who. Not they even wanted. that. Um, let's bring up the fact that they said uh, the little they was bringing up. Okay, we had a white girl over here in such and such, and she got caught with marijuana. She did five days. This other white girl, she got caught over here. She did two years. So these people have went to Russia, got caught with marijuana, served their time, and came home with no trade. This yeah. is with no trade. Yeah, I feel like with Britney, man, it was, like you say, it was symbolic. I feel like how it went down was just weird. America, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She just had on the Black Lives Matter shit. You had some weed on you. It's just like, we're going to make an example out of your ass. And then on top of that, we at war. And America making moves that and they, they don't funding really our fuck enemy. with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's funding just our like, enemy. yeah, let me fuck with y'all. If y'all really bit. want her back, let us get our guy. You exactly. know what I'm saying? And it was a that was a they drove a hard yeah. bargain. And it was yeah. like I can't say if I'm president, I make that trade. US is definitely it was a political move it for political America. Move. But I it can't. was definitely a chess play for Russia. Oh yeah. Oh like, yeah, it definitely was. Yeah, they definitely that, that. that was not they knew exactly what they had. Because I can't say Obama makes that trade. I don't see. I, I can't say a lot of. I I I feel like the Democrats are in a tough position right now. This they almost is, lo they almost lost the runoff yeah. to 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 fucking Herschel Walker. <laughs> Biden not doing good in the midterms. It, it was like I gotta do something. Let's bring Britney home. And then, like once again, this is not to say we're not happy she home. But when you see it happen and unfold, you start seeing the backlash. You start reading it from other perspectives. You got Asian American, you got not Asian American, you got Americans in China doing time right now, uh, unjustly prisoners, 
and they want to come home too. So they're asking Americans here are asking them to hey go to China and get our people out, make a trade for them. You know what song they play when Victor get off the uh, off the plane? <laughs> here you go. If we locked in, ain't no switching up. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Nigga killed my homie. Got a picture of that. Yo, that yo. <laughs> what song is that? They couldn't wait for that nigga to get home. <laughs> What song is that? You ain't never heard that song? Hell no. Oh, hey, shout out to that nigga. That nigga got a Who slap. Is that? I don't even know I've his name. I've seen it on, on Instagram, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, you stupid. They sh- say, if we locked in, ain't no switching up. Built the vow, you home, baby. I would say this, though. If you're American and you're going to any communist country, any country that you know got some tension with America, you make sure you follow all the fucking rules because the price just went up. Yeah, you better <laughs> not even say America the over there. You better try just, to blend just, in. Just blend the fuck in. Yeah. If they and say I wanna fuck say, America, you have, said to. If we basing it on trades, our WW3 trades are not looking good. Like who we really got left? What? I mean, I, I mean, because we got a lot of people, but they really they have wanted Victor for a long time, and, and they, they got him. They got him. And, it got and that's what make nothing. it that's what make it so peculiar because it's just like because bro. imagine the you know former presidents that they tried to do under deals uh, yeah, with uh, that deals we did table. not know about. Mm-hmm. I bet you Victor just know like he got connections or something. Like. He he was arms dealer also in like he was aiding China. Oh, he was aiding that's yeah, bad. He was a, he's Russia. an international. He was aiding that's the middle. Right when, when he was caught, he was caught in the Middle East aiding the Middle East in their war. That's well, my when he thing was caught. Is, my thing is like on the contrary, you don't think America got like arms, nigga? They, you, know, you don't think they got? I mean, arms it's not dealer, about nigga? the it's not about the arms dealer though per se. It's more so about like what How, does what, what does that represent? How what does that look? mean for the citizens? You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Right. Because like, somebody Russia, gonna get hurt. If Russia can snatch up and put a harsh sentence on pretty much a nobody in the world, like this is just this is just somebody, then think about who they could snatch up in the future and say, all right, this person had weed on them, and just be lying just to get another person, right. just to get another person out. Because yeah, no, right. no longer than what twenty minutes after they announced Britney was coming home, that I see on Twitter. Like now they're back in you know nuclear weapon discussions and talking about that. Like, come on. Yeah, it's crazy. A man. day ain't even passed. So yeah. it's, it 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 was political for America, chess for Russia. But you already you already know like Russia already just said from this whole Ukraine shit that they'll never trust the West again. So I mean I feel like this this move means something. Like it's something about to happen. I hope it's not just not work. a. Biden administration trying to, you know, win votes. votes. Yeah. Could be. Because that would votes. be really unfortunate. Like, this this year politically is just... It's, 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 it's votes. trash. It's votes. What that, like, what that Russian lady say? She said... And then I like... I like <laughs> how did that piece of Russian media make it over here? The three things she had going for her. She's not white. A white man. She, she, was, she wasn't white. She's black. And she's gay. Those are the three things that she had going for her. That's what the Russian media said. And that's something that we value over, you know, had she been a white man like Paul Whelan, a straight white man like Paul Whelan, who, you know, of course, is not black. Then had, that would have been a different it would have been a different uh, outcome. That's what they're feeding their people. And then that clips make, makes it over on Twitter to, to the American people, which I'm pretty sure is circulating with all the. You know, right wing or left wing, whatever that shit is, I'm I'm pretty sure that's speaking volumes. It said it said a lot. I, I I thought we would just get her home and everybody would cheer, but nah, the think pieces have been wild. What happened to the days where, if you was a politician and you wanted somebody to vote, you went to their neighborhood and you went out there, you kissed a couple babies, you shook a couple hands, COVID. You know what I'm saying? You're right, but <laughs> even though, man, like I feel like if they you still want, do it. If you want somebody to vote, man, you got to go to where they are. They you still know what do I'm it. Biden came. Biden ain't. Where he go to? Biden can't win everywhere. He went. So they, they go to areas where they know the vote is is not easy won. So if they're, if they're going somewhere, they're going into places like middle America. Um, a lot of times, blue collar towns in Indiana, Ohio, places like that to shake hands with people they know they have to swing votes. Yeah. In places where they, they don't have to swing votes in Charlotte because we vote 
Democrat. But if they were come to North Carolina, they may go to Greensboro. They I may go. To say, Green. we get we get more Republicans here. Yeah, we get more Republicans here. This is a red. This is a red state. Purple. This is a purple state. So we could go either way. Come to Baders Ford down there by John C. Uh, Smith. Well, Mike Pence will be here. Yeah, come to Baders Ford. Mike you want Pence the black not coming. Vote in he is. He, no, he's not coming to Baby's Oh, no, they're not exactly. going to Baby's They're come, going to uh, Billy Graham. Come to but, Freedom Drive. Yeah, they always go to Billy Graham. CG <laughs> if you want the black vote. No, you know no, no. no. And I think, that's, I think that's the sad part. Like, they don't have to do that to get no. the black vote. Like, they don't have to do that to get your vote. You're gonna they vote just got to show regardless. up in the city and pander a little bit. Yeah. yeah. That's that bullshit. Like, like they're they going to get the vote regardless. I'm just saying, man. I, <laughs> I just miss those days of connection. Like, that... That right there speaks. And I more think volume. you got it. I think you got it. With Obama was the last person I think that. Vis- but that was after he won. He came to UNCC. He came here for the Democratic National Convention. Um, Former first lady went to Central. Yeah, like you know, you you get that, and I and I don't think you'll get that from Biden because this is not a place. This is not a battleground place. Like for presidents, they go to battleground states, and then they put they they uh. They 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 do their politicking, but I think for people like Cheryl Beasley, I'm pretty sure she was uh, in Baby's Ford. Can you imagine uh, Obama? Votes. Can you imagine Obama off Baby's Ford? <laughs> oh man, I mean he's been in some hoods. Damn, oh yeah, right on close his, to Mr. Uh, he's, he's been in, he's been in some hoods. No, his food yeah. list, Damn. like his food list, yeah. like that. Obama been in some hoods, man. He shook some baby, he shook some hands and kissed some babies. Him, Bill Clinton. Bill, uh, Steve Harvey Bill was Clinton? over there off of uh, Independence. It's a lot of them people that's that's been in some hoods, man. When you got security, <laughs> when you got million dollar security, you go where you want. Pretty yeah, much, I guess. you go where you want. Ain't nobody fucking with you. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, Senator Warnock run the runoff against Herschel Walker. Shout out to that. Thank God. Yeah, man. I knew Herschel was gonna lose. Herschel, Herschel tongue too <laughs> too thick. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga. It's crazy, bro. He crazy as hell. I told y'all. I said this on his podcast. This nigga forgot who the fuck he was. So who the fuck, who the fuck thought this nigga was gonna be a politician? Did he still, did he still lose by one percent though? I think they should drop a list of names who voted for this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I don't you know can be what, what his shame. Was. Yo, you can find out who voted for him. So you, you can, can be publicly you, shamed. You, you, you can go on. Uh, what's that website you go on to see who people voted for? You can look up online to see how people vote. Yeah, it's a. You it's can a, see if people vote Republican or Democrat. Bro, you, public information. If yeah, that's you voted for that nigga. They should drop your credit score by like. <laughs> <laughs> By like 200 points, nigga. That nigga. For being a dumbass. He said the most, but the <laughs> final speech about a coon, I was done. <laughs> they, they say I'm a coon. <laughs> they say I'm a coon. Get your ass off stage. <laughs> but the they don't you know. Doing? And you know what's crazy? A coon is the smartest animal in the jungle. <laughs> no, 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 no. I no, mean, he in, didn't. in the fourth. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did, man. <laughs> I know he did. Yes, he was there that serious. But, like, my thing is. Shut your ass. Where up. are his friends? He ain't got no black friend to be like, get your ass off the stage. Like, they Ooh. all stopped fucking with him when he said he was going to be a politician. No, yo, a lot of them <laughs> athletes that's no that famous. Yeah, there. from that time period, those athletes don't have white friends. They, I mean, black friends. They got white friends. This nigga has been hit repeatedly. He has, what's that uh, condition called? CF. Something. CTE? CTE. He got that. He got that. <laughs> What's that? CF? <laughs> CTE? Yeah, he yes, got he got that, nigga. That's what he, I ain't get being hit. I just got regular memory loss. This nigga got that, though. And he's crazy. He, yeah. He's crazy, I, man. His, man, he came close, man. He came close. I got to give him his props. He came close. Which I'm I not, don't understand how. He came close as fuck. I'm not voting for no nigga that talk like Shannon Sharp, nigga. No. <laughs> it's, it's like, um... <laughs> I used to, y'all niggas got to <laughs> get together and, and come up with a salute. No, nigga. You it's lost like, me, nigga. It, you lost me. It's like uh, Charlamagne been saying, man. He said the Republicans, they show you that their voters got loyalty. They can just throw anybody in, in the Republican seat. They're going to vote for him. But that should be, he should have been embarrassment. He should have been an embarrassment to the Republican Party. Well, I think Dr. Umar made a good point. He He represents the agenda. It's not about the person it's about will you carry out the agenda that we placed in front of you and i think that it, i think that i thought that was a great point that he made like ah that makes sense that makes sense even for trump we say trump was um you know we, we slander trump all the time for being outlandish and being who he was 
But at the end of the day, he was still carrying out the white power structure agenda. I think that was, I think that's a good point. Like, as long as you're going to do what we tell you to do, we don't give a fuck what you do, how you sound and how you come across. And I think that's what politics is now. I think Johnny talk about that all the time. Politics has changed. Like, they, they go low now. They, they actually diss each other. Back in the day, you know, they didn't take it this far. But now they will call each other out. Yeah. Like it's getting Direct. out. Like it's how it's they gotten outlandish. Sherry Beasley, they were slandering her. They were slandering. Yeah, they like the slander has changed in politics. Don't you know that this nigga got twenty kids he don't take care of? Nah, what's so <laughs> crazy was Sherry Beasley didn't even have a good commercial until like the last week of. <laughs> and she still lost. A vote. <laughs> Hold on, did she lose? <laughs> Hell yeah, she lost. She lost. Hell yeah. Did that cut off? Cause she had so many bad commercials. I say her PR team sucks. They ain't put out no counter commercial, nothing. But wasn't she up against, uh, what's that white man that she was up against? I don't know, but his people is on point. I, I think it's going to be hard to get that first white, I mean, black woman politician out the South. Was That's like, going to be a tough one to get. They was bringing up dark shit. You, yeah, that's going to be a tough Sherry one to get. Sherry Beasley eats boogers. Because even Stacey <laughs> Abram with all the, uh, even, even Stacey Abram with all the, <laughs> This is her picking up her nose <laughs> right here. He was like, ugh, disgusting. <laughs> she never get my vote. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, man. Moving on. Do black men tell their homies they love them? Yes. How you do it, bro? I got a group of niggas that tell me they love me all the time. And at first, she for it. No, I know. At first, oh, it was kind of weird. Sexual ass, I thought it, you know. It was kind of weird telling another shit. man you love him, but <laughs> the crazy thing is, me and these niggas been knowing each other twenty plus, oh, okay. and then the how the fabric of life is not fabric. Yeah, I know, not fabric. Uh, yeah, it's the fabric was of it life. Like cotton, silk, polyester. Uh, I don't know, but it's dangerous as fuck. We can call it polyester. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? It's just you know you you never know when you're gonna see your nigga again. You, it, it's real serious, so you know sometimes we be like, I love you, my nigga. And, you know, just to keep it real. And that's real spill. Mm. I got a group of niggas that say that shit on a, on a real occasion. We've been knowing each other so long. No, I just say it. Do you think that came with age? It definitely had to come with age and maturity. Mm, yeah. And just realizing, just being aware of, of how life is, man. You could be here and gone the next. And actually, the dude, shout out to my dude. I ain't going to say his name. But the actual guy that who says... He loves me. He his son got it was in an altercation where he got shot at. So you Did know he what I'm lose saying. His life? No, he didn't. But you know what I'm saying. It's just that's what I'm it's saying. It's just a reminder that yeah, that's what I'm at saying. At any given moment, you may not be here. Exactly. Mm. D just put the words right there. Okay. So you know, it's 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 crazy out here, man. But if you got a group of niggas that you love, man, just tell them. It is what it is. I'm proud of you, James. Yeah. Of all people, I didn't expect that to come from you. Yeah, man. You know, I've been growing, you know. <laughs> I've been growing. You know, no, I'm still, still the on the same height, shenanigans, man. but, uh, you know. Um, you had to throw the short joke. I mean, I had big. to, man. You know, it's yeah. all right. God um, got me. All right. Also this week, man, uh, last week we talked about Amy Robach and TJ Holmes. Uh, they were suspended. They're going to investigate TJ Holmes a little bit more, saying that he may have had other relationships at the... Uh, at the at the uh, at the workplace, I in the thought offices, that. Um, and I'm saying that he, he might be canceled. one of the reasons one of the producers quit, some shit like that. So that's what they're gonna do there. Now, um, Doctor Umar was on the Breakfast Club. Shout out to Doctor Umar, man, Johnny's man. favorite man. <clears throat> Dr. Umar talked about a few topics that we're going to talk about here tonight, but this is one of those topics he talked about. Um, and he made a point of saying something that I think my boy said to me before in regards to this topic. But he said that black men normally get the white women that are undesirable to white men. Do y'all think or believe that that's true? I mean, in some cases... In some cases, yes. You know what I'm saying? Because you can see a brother and he be with the biggest white girl ever. And sometimes I be trying to look and see what y'all see in the chick and then I see her buying something and I'll be like, oh, it's money. I got you. You know? But, I mean, I have seen some black guys with some, some decent white women. You know what I'm saying? It's just all on 
the preference, I guess. I don't know. Maybe big white women are easier. I don't know. I'm not sure. What about you, D? Um, I would say I'm on a fence because I know a couple men that have some beautiful women. Um, but then I also have seen that that is true. They usually have, you know, the bottom of the barrel. All right. So I think I was on y'all side. I was on y'all side. I was against him in this argument that white, that the white, that black men get the leftovers of white women. I was, I was on that side. But I was only on that side because I was thinking like y'all were thinking. I was thinking about undesirable has in looks. And when you hear Dr. Umar break it down, it's not really about looks. It's about money, power. It's mm-hmm. about the merger of the two. So it's not about looks. I think they get the leftovers as far as these are the white women that white men don't want. But yeah. those white men don't want those women not because of looks. They're just not desired by their race for a few factors. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because, like he said, you can always get a white, a black boy or a black man to go, you know, a football player to go pick out some trailer park trash and make her a dime piece. He said that happens a lot. Yeah. I thought that was a good point he brought up. Uh, when he brought up the fact that TJ Holmes was messing with Amy Robach, who was a married white woman, he wasn't messing with leftovers. And he said that T.J. Holmes represented, he kind of, you know, he took a a hit. You know, that was like a hit to the white man. So now they're going to investigate him, and he might be be persecuted for what he did with Amy Robach because she wasn't an undesirable white woman. He said when you you see situations like that, the punishment is much harsher for black men. So I want to see what happens now since I listened to that interview, got his side, listening to him, Charlamagne, and DJ Envy talk about it. I do want to see what happens with TJ Holmes because now I'm looking at it like I don't think Amy Robox a trap you. What they which they both said, you know. Yeah. Um what uh um what they both said during the show. They you know, they they both acknowledged that she wasn't the most attractive white woman. So that's when I realized undesirability don't really have anything to do with how they look. It's 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 a it's bigger than how they look. Um so But I I hope they don't hold him accountable because he didn't do it by himself. He he didn't. He didn't. But I, I mean, mean, if they hold him accountable for like the the other producer that may have left or if they find something else, then yes. But I just, timing is very interesting on, on them wanting to investigate now. I think that's what happens, though. I think what happens is you do find them accountable on what happened to the young lady who left. And then you say this is the reason why we're getting rid of them. You can't just say we're getting rid of him because he was messing with Amy and we ain't, we ain't fucking with that. Right. You got you to gotta put something on him because she's not being investigated for any other work, workplace uh, practices or any, uh, as far as we know. And then they want to see if they violated a morality clause. So, I mean, I really don't have much on this. Just listening to Umar talk, I kind of want to see how this plays out in the end. True. Um, which I watched most of that interview on The Breakfast Club. He talked about... Uh, the Marcus Garvey school that we always laugh about here. He says almost finished. He said in three months, the school is close to being finished. Uh, should be opening in February. Shout out to that. But he says he's upset because he had to go get white contractors to finish the job. Mm. He said the only reason it's took him so long because the contractors that he's been dealing with, the black contractors, um, they didn't do good work for him. Mm. And he said, I had to go out and hire white people to, you know, get the job done. And he said, he's quite, quite frankly, he's upset that he had to do that. Mm. Um, and he said, you know, Charlamagne asked him, he said, what does that say about us? He says that we need schools like this. Um, so it was an interesting interview. Did y'all listen to it? Did y'all get anything from it? Did y'all hear anything from it? I haven't listened, listened to it in completion, but I got to pretty much what the TJ Holmes part was. Like I skipped to that piece. Um, but Dr. Umar is an interesting person. Yeah. And I, I feel like I get what he's saying. We do. It's like he wants to support us. When I say us, it's black people. He wants to support the black community. He wants to support the black people. But if they keep doing shit like, you know, not doing the work or not taking care of things in full, you know, he's hiring them to build something for 
not just his legacy, but for our community, and they're doing a half-assed job. So what happens if they open the school and then, you know, shit don't work right? Mm. Now it looks bad on him. Now you have children that are impacted. So I, I get what he's saying. Yeah. And I can see why he's frustrated. Um, you know, we laugh and we talk shit about Dr. Umar all the time. But he's not a, he, he's a smart man. Yeah, he at is. At the end of the day. He is. Um, was you talking, was he on The Breakfast Club or was he on that other Charlemagne guy show? No, nah, he was on The Breakfast Club. He was yeah. on The Breakfast Club. I watched the other uh, clip of him on um, Charlemagne's nightly show. Oh, that's his nightly um, show. But that's that's uh, that's TV. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. That's TV. Ain't too much Dr. Umar you gonna get yeah. when you got yeah. 20 right producers like, all right, all right, cut that, cut that. You know, it's exactly. just like Wild and Out. Wild and Out has had moments that's leaked to us, but the producers are like, that's never gonna make it inside that show. So yeah. it's just certain things that I know he he probably won't be able to say on the national ways. But I do uh, believe that. Umar, by the end of this all being said and done, will gain more popularity than he has now. Like, I can see that happening for him. Um, everybody knows who he is and what he stands for. Um, they was asking him why he don't ad address the trolls. He was like, I'm not going to feed into that, man. I'm really doing the work, so I don't have to address yeah. the trolls, you know? True. So it was a lot of things, like, because we, we, I think we were set up here talking before, like, when he going to get the school done? Like, at some point, it right. starts to look crazy, but like he says, I'm doing the work, and you'll just see what I do. Uh, I really want to shout him out too, man. When he said he was doing the work, he was uh, in Cuba learning about the Yoruba. Uh, if you don't know what that is, that is like the original African mm -hmm. uh, religion of our people. Um, so I thought that was dope. I mean, he just shows and proves time and time right. again, you know. Yeah. Um, but I wonder, because is there a collaboration or when he says he's doing the work, what happens when you have, let's see, uh, I can't remember her name right now, but you have people like Rick Ross that bought all that land in order to build a community. Or you have the young lady that down in Georgia, she bought all that land to build, build. a community. Yeah. So Do it's they like, work together. Right. So it's like, at what point when he, will he reach out or will he try to help? Sorry. Will he try to help, you know, them in order to help himself? You know, see, like, Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I mean, I, don't know. I feel like something like that on a scale like that would be a very big message. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been waiting on a day where I can see where all black people going to come together. You know what I'm saying? And I think collaborations are the best way for that. So I feel what you're saying. Yeah, they, they he should reach out. But, like, that's going to be totally on him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I guess it's going to be, like, a time for that, I guess. But... He definitely should. I think it's something like that should happen. I think it's a lot of times like aligning with beliefs. Um, right. What do these people beliefs align with his beliefs, his mission, purpose, True. his statement? Um, I think one of the interesting things he said is, you know, I'm not opposed to talking to anybody. I sit down and talk with people all the time. Um, just, just everybody, everybody just falls falls different and has different ideas of where we should go as a race. But I mean. Once again, I think that time will come with people like Umar and any other leaders can get in the room and start coming up with what they think is fair and right. Like he spoke about the reparations on the Breakfast Club interview. He said he, you know, he he he, he don't believe that uh, 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 with Bob, uh, what's his name, Bob Johnson. Mm -hmm. He don't, you know, he, it's not about the number with him. It's not about the f actual figure. It's about really making what you did wrong to ro black people. Right. Some black people like just give us the cash, but he's like, nah, we more than that. We need more than that. We're owed more than that. I think one of the first things he said will be on his agenda for reparations is all the music companies will have to turn over black music back to black people. He said, mm -hmm. that's our number one export, import, export. Mm -hmm. Um, which I thought that was actually right. You know, I could imagine what black people life would look like, or at least our opportunities would look like if we did actually run the industry that we created, the industry yeah. that we pretty much put out all the music for. I think rap is still no, the number one genre in the world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that to me is more than a $335,000 check. Right. Um, or a $225,000 check, but it's, Easy to say from my perspective, but somebody in the hood could use that. So it's so many different hands in the pot with so many different ideas. And I think that white power just feeds off the fact that no matter what we have or what we do, we stay 
we stay split. Mm-hmm. And my biggest thing, and I always say this, we still feed that system because we vote. And I can't tell anybody not to. Because if that's a system you believe in, then that's how that system works. You have to operate in that. But that also feeds into the white power structure, something he talked about. Like, and that's something I also agree with him on. Like, you know, these people are here to carry out an agenda that don't have shit to do with ours. Right. And that's why when we when election time come, that's the only time you may see a politician. That election time come, that's the only time they're pandering and telling us what they're going to do for our community, but we never hold their feet to the fire. But I don't know. We'll see. With Biden not really holding up his end of the bargain, maybe maybe that'll change. If we don't get a candidate we want, where do, where do black people go with their vote come election time? So, I mean, it's, it's interesting. It was a very insightful interview. He touched on a lot. He touched on something we about to touch on here in a minute. He touched on Deion Sanders, something I didn't agree with him about. I don't think Deion Sanders would be the savior of HBCUs. This week, Deion Sanders took a head coaching job at Colorado, and he's bringing his son with him to be the quarterback. He has agreed to a five-year, $29 million mm. uh, deal here with uh, Colorado University, and there was a lot of backlash. A lot of people said, you know, he sold out. Um, Man, tell everybody that told him that he sold out, offer them $29 million, see what they do. <laughs> They gonna take that shit too. Like I don't, I don't understand what this this whole thing against him means, man. He did good, and they called him up. You know what I'm saying? I feel like what he said was very valid. You know what I'm saying? You're going up there to educate. It ain't like and integrate. It ain't like I'm just going up there just because they giving me the money. You know what I'm saying? Like you, yeah. you bringing more than just that. But like people, I don't know, man. People, that crab I, in the bucket thing, man. He did a lot for Jackson. Yeah, he did. He did in the two. What was it, two years? He did. He did. Like, even if even if you were mad at him for leaving or, you know, taking a job over at Colorado, he came in in a short period of time that he was with Jackson State, and he he lit a fire mm-hmm. under the behinds of the administration, of the players, players' parents, their support teams. And, you know, reminded people that HBCUs have something to offer. Mm -hmm. He got the conversation started around HBCU talent. So regardless, you can't take that away because now you do have, you know, new viewership. You do have new perspectives, new possibilities or opportunities available, at least to to Jackson State players. Simply because he showed up and he made changes. And I think what he did the job for free. Well, damn at the end of the day, he damn near did the job for free. Like when I think he only got paid three million dollars for if he got it. It was said he was supposed to make a million dollars a year. He was supposed to make three million dollars. I think he committed to three years. Mm. He, In those he three wanted, years, yeah. he uh, he put up the money to upgrade the facilities. Yep. He put he poured into the school. You know what I'm saying? From the salary he got, so basically he went from coaching high school football for nothing because you don't get paid for that. Not not like that. Not like Dion. Yeah, that. Then you go take another job at a college where, okay, I got paid, but this college needs money more than I need it. Yeah. You know, I can do, I can go a while without a couple of these checks. Here, take this money. I'll, I'll pour it back into the school. I'll fix this. I'll do that. I'll put my neck on the line for you guys. I think he laid down the blueprint. And I, and I, and, and I, once again, I'll refer back to Dr. Umar's interview. I don't agree with Dr. Umar there. You cannot, we cannot. It's like the Obama thing, all right? For those who vote, for those who believe in U.S. politics, you cannot count on one man, Security. one black president to save everybody. We yeah. can't count on Dion to save HBCUs. It's really us, the HBCU alumni right. and the black community to save the HBCUs. Like yeah. Dr. Umar talked about, like he said, I get the HBCUs all the time. I tried to buy my own, but it's just hard. He said in the next 10 years, there will be a few HBCUs that won't exist anymore, which that's mm-hmm. sad because those institutions laid the groundwork for our, our early, uh, some of our early family members to even get yeah. an education. You know, right. it's illegal to educate Negroes. Yeah, well, it was illegal to yeah. educate Negroes. So, I mean, it, it's Dion can't save everybody. I think he put a blueprint out there on how it should be done, and maybe somebody else can come pick up the torch. But like he said right. on I Am Athlete, 
Hey, hey, dog, if they sell you some money, what you going to do? He said, I'd be a fool not to entertain it. Yeah, exactly. Meaning, right. I'd be a fool not to see if I should take this offer or exactly. not. You know what I'm saying? It just is what it is at the end of the and day. And coaches move all the time. Like, this isn't anything new. New, exactly. no. And I feel like, if anything, part, I think part of, the embar- part of the argument is embarrassment. Because now, like you said, there's a blueprint. But with a blueprint, someone has to do the work. Exactly. And because they weren't doing the work before, it's like, well, shit, you done brought us here. We got to do all this, man. Da, 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 da. Like, ain't nothing like somebody basically coming in and cleaning your whole house and be like, all right, I'm out. Like, shit, well, what the fuck I'm supposed to do now? I don't want to do this. I thought it was real unfortunate that they stole from him. What you mean? Y'all ain't hear that part where he said he had left his, uh, his stuff in the locker room and while he was coaching, somebody came in, took him for everything he had. Deion Sanders. No, nah, I don't. I didn't hear about yeah, that. He, he said that. He said that on the um in one of the interviews, and I thought that was unfortunate too because you knew it had to be somebody that was in there, on the team or something like that. So it, it's it's possible, but yeah. I mean we know that there is always going to be. For black people in general, regardless of what industry you are, you always gonna have to work twice as hard. I think another thing that people may be upset about, he one of his assistant coaches coming to Colorado, they're coming from another HBCU. Mm. And did I read that correctly? No, uh, I didn't see, I didn't see that. I could imagine. I mean, you're a coach, you 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 get your own coaching staff, so right. coaches don't only bring in who they, you know, who they need to get the job done. That's in every level of all sports, you know what I'm saying? Usually once the coaching once the head coach changes, mm-hmm. the staff is going to change. And he said he was bringing manager. people, you know, he was bringing some gems with him. He did say yeah. that in his speech. Um, so now they're upset. They're like, oh, well, you're bringing another assistant coach or some other support from another HBCU and they're going to suffer. And it's like, for once, I would like for black people to take off the lens of pessimism and just see the good that was Those- done. And then go from there. Those HBCUs are going to suffer because they don't get alumni funds, period. Not because Deion Sanders is not your coach. Not because <laughs> the top recruit don't want to. You know how many PWIs don't know top recruit want to go play at UNCC. Yeah. I mean, but they're not underfunded. They yeah. don't not have the facilities. Oh, yeah, no, I ain't never you feel no what meals. I'm saying? Right. Don't nobody don't. The reason why nobody wants to play for the HBCUs, it ain't the coach's fault. It ain't the players. It ain't the staff. It's the alumni. The alumni needs to support these schools. Had these schools had top notch facilities, top notch everything when it comes to sports, and we're getting our best of the best athletes. Then this but, wouldn't even be a discussion. But the alumni don't put the money in. Do you know that these motherfucking grads, these tech grads, these alumni grads, these uh, uh old white money that they funnel into their schools, they set up trust for these schools. Mm-hmm. They put money into their community. Like, the point here ain't Dion. The point here is the people who graduated from these schools and also our community have to put these schools up here on a threshold and, and, and support them. Yeah. It's a community effort. And I know it don't look like that with white people. I know it looks like, oh, white people just got money. White people got money because white people support themselves, not only singular, they support their community all and, the way around. And that's what I was <laughs> going to say. Just playing devil's advocate, just siding with the uh, people that's mad. Um they always taking shit from us, man. Always. And it seems like once we get something, it never lasts long. So I can understand why people are upset. I'd rather our athletic programs be ass and the alumni give millions upon millions of billions of dollars right. to these schools so they can have the top notch everything that they need. Howard won't have these issues with their dormitory. We did a story. We, we talked about that story. They were they they had to protest to get their facilities up to code. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Right. I'd rather see those. For, I'd rather see every black HBC. I'd rather see every HBC. You be as sorry as UNCC, but as glorious as UNCC. <laughs> well, as pristine as you You ever been in an apartment I on that just campus? Gonna say, they <laughs> are they are real pristine to be losing like how they are. Because yeah, uh, it's, that, cause it's mean, not about sports. That's, that shit is about education. UNC yeah. Chapel got Hill is a beautiful campus. The worst school in our state. The worst but best school in our state. And I'm not talking about worst. I'm talking about athletically. It will probably be NC State, maybe East Carolina. But have you been there? Have you seen it? It's immaculate. 
looks great. It looks great. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. And you know, another thing that people don't know about HBCUs and sports, South Carolina State has put more niggas in these leagues than anybody. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So fuck, it's, fuck the sports. It's bigger than sports. It's bigger than Dion. If you're blaming Dion, then that's then you're missing a point. You're missing a problem. Right. When Dion worked there, he worked for free. Problem ain't Dion. Problem is the money. It's all about the money, baby. I know he gonna do good wherever he goes, man. I just like his confidence. All right, man. Let's break this down, James. Let's get to the bottom of this, man. What's up? Internet saying John Morant is traveling. All right, so we'll put this up on the screen, man. We're gonna break down this footage. I previously seen this, and I'm gonna just say yes. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna yes. watch this again live for y'all. You know what all I'm right, saying? let's do it. Clip one, John Morant comes Ooh. down. What's that? Travel. It's not travel. Actually, that's a carry. That's not travel. That's a carry. That now that's a walk. That's definitely a carry. That's a also. fucking walk. No, that's just a straight up walk. That's not a. That's, that's not a carry. Look, it's over that. No, that, that's a. That's not a carry. When you do like this, and you still that's in motion. Not, okay, that's a walk. When you do like this, and you still in motion. <laughs> that's that's definitely a carry. Putting your hand right under here, the ball. Right here. That one was tough because his hand was on the side. What about that one? He does that a lot. Yeah, he does. Now that was that was definitely that's a not carry. a carry. It was, look, and under, one, two, three. That's a walk, travel. Yeah, carry. travel. All of it. And then between oh, he's the legs, that was like four. <laughs> Yo, I blame James Harden, and that's not a travel. Yeah. James Harden definitely don't mess the game up to the point. He definitely be taking extra steps. I what feel like if, he do. What if these niggas was rule book assassins? Like, have you ever read the rule book for basketball to see if you couldn't actually put your hand under the ball? I'm going to tell you like, one thing. Like, who told you that's illegal? I'm going to tell you one thing I know from watching basketball for a long time. The star always get away with some calls. You, think you better believe that. A three-year man should be getting away with these calls, though? You're right, though. But I guarantee you, like, if you go look at footage, LeBron that's be getting a lot of calls. James LeBron Harden, don't carry it like that. James Harden be getting a lot of calls. Goddamn, like, people that they like, like, Luka Doncic be getting a lot of calls. And it be people that drive to the rack, like, that's not really known like that. Like, I would say, like, Lenny Walker. I like watching Lenny Walker. This dude crash the boards all the time, bro. If anybody touch him, they not call him foul. And it's just weird. You know what I'm saying? It's like... But are, like a lot of these, are they even like look? Like a lot of these, are they even carries? Like what's the call? I, I seen the move. I seen the move. I, mean, I seen the move, but it's hard. Though. It's hard to debate some of these. Like some of them are though. Like, like that like, one's obvious, but is it obvious? Is it obvious? Is that down. obvious yes. to the naked eye? You got that think one was. He came down to the on naked one foot. eye, but you don't catch that in the game. Hey, you're supposed to when you're getting paid millions of dollars to the, do it. Who said the ref get paid millions? I don't refs, think refs get paid refs millions. at least getting paid a meal. I would, uh, I would love to know that. I don't think NBA refs a make a meal. meal. Let at me least. look that up. They 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 in the five hundred to a meal. I'm not. Listen, I I think some of these calls ain't really calls that we think are calls. I don't think. The way the ball moves in the player hands sometimes may not be the call. Yeah. I don't think that's the... I don't know. NBA I, I don't know. referee salary is between 180000 mm. and 550000 oh, I, I figured close. that. I figured that. I was on you the back end. You were nowhere near close. I, I said 500 you, Oh, you did? 500 to a mil. I got to play this, man. All right, man. Uh, also, Ben Gordon was caught by Cameron. Live on the streets in New York. <laughs> yes, being Cameron. arrested by the yeah, Cameron. Yo, shout out to Cameron, man. I uh so I seen this clip. So that is the real Cameron? Yes, that's Cameron. Why that he, he looks so damn different. Right? Like he, I just had to I kept playing it back like that's not the same. Yeah, the man. little afro and shit. I ain't seen this. Nah. I need to see this. Cameron he is, is entertaining. Um, yeah. yeah, Cameron's got his own sports show coming. Um, it looks so far so good. I got stuck on it for a good 30 minutes on Instagram. But uh, he caught Ben Gordon getting arrested live for trying to stab people with needles. What the and fuck? And he was interviewing people on the street about the situation. Now, what it, kind of needle was this? A sewing needle, I think he said it was. A sewing needle. A sewing needle, I think he said it was. So my nigga was knitting a shirt. 
or a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna and lie, somebody man. got this nigga that bad prayers, to a point. Prayers up for Ben Goy, man, because it don't look good. Was was drugs involved? It don't look good. I I would have to find it. Oh uh, my god, can't find it right now. But it don't look good for and Ben Goy. And that Gordon. nigga's a shooter. What you doing with some thread and needle? <laughs> yeah, it don't. <laughs> yeah, he might be a shooter. Stitches. He might be a shooter now. But nah, it, it don't look good for Ben Gordon. Is this it? This might just be the headline. Hey yo, that's Ben Gordon over there. That's exactly what they were saying. They was like, "Yo, son, we seen Ben Gordon." And, it was like, yo, they, they was hemming him up because he was out here trying to stab people with needles. I will say Ben Gordon used to be a fucking fool. Yeah, this is it. His right years here. in uh, Chicago. Oh, my goodness. My you found it? Used to go yeah, I might, I might play it on the phone. I didn't even know that was a clip. That's camera, man. Look at camera. With Diplomat shirt on. <laughs> Let me see. Yo, this is live from the street. Yo, yo, look over there. It's that nigga Ben Gordon. Point for it is when it is talk outside of home hospital with former NBA player and six man of the year, Van Gordon, seems to be having some mental issues, trying to stab people. Weapon of choice, sewing needles. And this is one of the needles that they say Ben was using. Ben, you the hell of stabbing people with needles and shit. And all of them. Yes, that's Van Gordon, former NBA player, 39-year-old, was detained outside a Harlem apartment building this morning. Police took him to Harlem Hospital, where he tried to make a brazen escape and leave the hospital. How's he getting all this footage? Right now, let's talk know. to some witnesses. The Is he there? <laughs> hey, yo, I don't even know what was going on. I'm walking by. I see Ben outside. I don't even know, but I, yeah, I don't even know, brother. I, no, I couldn't have said 8.30 in the morning to take the kids to school. You know, I'm tired now. I see my nigga Ben, I'm like, Ben, up? But Ben is running. Cops behind him. He tackled the nigga. He got sewing needles. And he go. That's all, then. So listen, <laughs> there you have it. The Mental fuck? health is no joke. Let's hope this nigga Ben go and get the help that he really needs. Reporting live from Harlem. It is what it is. It's your boy Killer Cam reporting Cam need for this talk outside the home hospital. Cam need to stop. Yeah, man, it's not looking for good for one of our greats. Ben Gordon, man, he had an icy mid-range jumper. Now he's smoking ice. Man, look, <laughs> yeah, now you know that. Nigga, I assume somebody could have took ice. some money from that nigga or something, man. Yeah, well, he looking bad shit. for a nigga. Hey, if you used to make a few million, like you were starting in the league, you can't look bad. I know cats that never started in the league. They look great. They skin great. Car nice. House nice. James Jones is one of them. No, I ain't talking about now. I'm talking about niggas never played a. They they got drafted. Never played a minute. James they Jones just is right. one of them. James Jones played in the league. Wait, that's what I'm saying. But he never. I'm talking played. about niggas. No, James Jones played in the league. When did you about see him play? Miami Heat. James Jones. When did you see him play? He played for the Heat. I know, but when did you he see him like play eight for years the, in the Heat? Heat. I seen him play for the Heat. You with my seen him eyes, ride the with bench. LeBron. No, he played. You seen him ride the bench. That nigga never years? played. That, if he played, he played like nine minutes. Fam, get out of here. He did, bruh. That nigga never played, bro. <laughs> Ever. His career minutes probably like a hundred minutes. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about his career minutes. I think his career was long. Nah, he, his career was definitely long, but it's like, bro, never played like that, bro. I think his career was long. My point is, it's niggas that ain't played a year, just got drafted, and they look good. Like, they look good for themselves. From oh, 2003 own, to 2017, this nigga had a say, career. This nigga owned a team, though. This nigga played for 2003 to 2017. Riding the bench. It don't matter, nigga. It's niggas that never see the fucking floor. Whether Look he was riding the bench or not, he was getting my paid. Point Look is, up some James Jones highlights. He was getting like, paid. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My, <laughs> my point is, there's niggas that come out of college, get drafted, get to the team and say, hey, go to the G League and never get back to the team. I see they, what you're saying right they there. They don't look bad, bro. That's why I'm saying this nigga either j that wasn't Ben Gordon's story. He shouldn't look this way. This nigga never played. I'm trying to tell you, he was a. Bitch I'm not rapper. talking about James Jones. I'm just saying he was James Jones player. played 
uh, damn near ten years in the league, he should never look bad. But what I'm saying is, Ben Gordon started in the league. He was he was like the guy. He shouldn't look the way he looks. Oh well, that's my point. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, moving on, man. Courtney Clinney has been de- mm, denied bond. Now I didn't know this girl had a OnlyFans, the one that killed her African boyfriend. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was one of the big um highlights or big things about their fighting was jealousy because of her OnlyFans or whatever. Is that the lie she told? No, I think that was more so from um, friends of both of them. Like, people that knew how, you know, violent their relationship could be. Got it, got it, got it. Um, Well, yeah. They denied her bond because of the OnlyFans. She made a million dollars on OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. She made $1.8 million in 2020. Mm. Pandemic, niggas was whacking off crazy. And 900 k before that. Now, Johnny's favorite company, Shein, has been exposed. That's right. The company, Shein, has been exposed. They've been reported for unethical workplace practices. Workers make about $565 U.S. a month to make 500 pieces of clothing. They work like 18-hour mm. days. Mm. They're only given one day off a month. Uh, workers are penalized two-thirds of their pay if they make any mistakes on the clothing. Mm. Uh, poor working conditions, high level of toxic uh, chemicals in the clothing. Uh, they have... They've been under fire for copying independent designers uh, like items, which I think fashion companies do that all the time. All the time. Um, let's see. Mishandling a c- customer's uh, information. Mm. Uh, the brand is valued more than Zara and H&M. Their valuation is higher, man. That's why I fuck They with just fashion, dropped a, uh, in October, Shein dropped, uh, not Shein, but there was somebody who dropped a doc. I don't know where the documentary is at, but you can catch that doc and see what's going on. People are starting to protest against Shein saying don't buy it. So, um, Well, I know one thing that's a fact over there in like Asia. They don't have like work, work laws. laws. Yeah, so they be working these motherfuckers to death. <laughs> like literally they got apartment buildings at your job. Yeah. So you can go up there, go to sleep. It's like a work. few billion people in China. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, and it's really unfortunate. Um, yeah, it is. Cause you wouldn't, we ain't working like that. Yeah, and we complain about the work we do get a forty hour work week. And yeah. you know, shout out to Elon if you if you want to say shout out to him. But um, some people showed up to work this week, and I think they had like beds or comfortable chairs for them to be able to sleep. And relax at the office. He said it's because they trying to get niggas to be at work all day. He said it's because he wants to make sure his people are comfortable. Yeah, but I bet that's kind of hard after you send out whatever document or telling people you know expect to work hard uh, or very long hours in the next coming months as Twitter has an over overhaul. So yeah, that's what the beds is for. Yeah, I'm about to work the dog shit out of you. Take a nap. (laughs) I yeah. thought she was to work with a damn bed in my dick. De- nah, we not doing that. Yeah, I'm about to work dog shit. Are you taking that? <laughs> Get ready for the shift. Get ready for the ball. <laughs> I'm about to kill your ass. About to wear your ass out. You about to be cold like a motherfucker. Uh, question. You didn't delete that video, did you? No. Okay, good, good, good. Um, where we at? Where we at? All right, man. A few other headlines, man. Apple Music got a new karaoke feature. Johnny should be happy about that, man. That's the karaoke king. <laughs> Call Apple Music Sing. There'll be an icon up when you pull the lyrics up for your Apple songs that do have lyrics, and you could just turn that uh, icon has a volume thing. You turn it down. It's the beat only. Now you can have a little karaoke party, man. Y'all, y'all got y'all got a karaoke song? Have y'all ever sung karaoke? Man, hell yeah! One time, me and my mom, my dad, and my sister all was in the living room. Y'all saw karaoke. we are we are family. Nah, we ain't even seen that. What we sung saying? a bunch of old school songs from the. 80s and 90s. I mean, 80s and 70s and 60s. What's your, what's your go-to, bro? My go-to? Yeah. I don't really have one. Oh. I just like singing old school songs. Never That's sung karaoke. Shit. If you ever want to sing karaoke in Charlotte, Jeff's Bucket Shop. Mm. Jeff's Bucket Shop. Doesn't sound like a good time. No, it actually is a good time. It's a great time. Oh. Jeff's Bucket Shop. Check it out. I said um, one day I'm going to do karaoke. I go, to, go to Jeff's. And then at somebody's house. Go to Jeff's four dollar drinks. You could do it on your. You phone. can be slapped at Jeff's yeah. before you even hit stage, like for twenty dollars <laughs> slapped. Um, what else? Oh, uh, R. Kelly dropped. I admit it, man. Man, listen. Stop it. <laughs> I'm 
sorry, should, what did you give him? <laughs> they should get this nigga 10 more years. Now, listen, man. Sony said they didn't release that album. That album is a bootleg. Which tells me that's real music from R. Kelly. They just didn't know how it got out, quote unquote. But uh, it was down in minutes, man. Shout out to Johnny for sending that to the group. How they, how, wait a minute, wait a minute. They said, oh, it, they said it didn't authorize how that release. How they not know how shit get out? When you got full ass people in jail on TikTok. Well, they spoke. They are. So they own his catalog. So they had to, you know, explain why this made it. Mm. And they said it must have been bootleg because they didn't release it. So somebody in on the inside got the information to the Apple Music that R. Kelly is on. And, you know, it was like, yo, push my shit through. Drop I can only shit. imagine what a song sounds like. Um, let's find out. Yeah, I did it. Yeah, I did it, nigga. And that was me. I, I did mean, it kind of does. Sound like yeah, it. I mean, Boondocks <laughs> was kind of on something years ago. Well, didn't you send me the Boosie shit? I did on uh, Twitter. Oh, That's oh, me oh, oh. right there taking a pee. Boosie, Boosie rocked out to it. Let's let's let's, let's take a little, <laughs> little is listen. Extra. Little listen to it. Some mistake on my damn name. Now, when you was mad with me, but I never offer her no drink. But I admit that she asked me. Yeah, look at this nigga face. That I told it all from my good points to my She said, What about Aliyah? Said, Love. She said, What about the take? I said, Love. I said, My lawyer said, Don't say no. I can tell you, I've been set up. I made it ever since the first day. First day. Yeah, man. That, them lyrics sound crazy. Yo, them lyrics sound crazy. My lawyer said, don't say none. Nigga, you, no, I'm done. Yo. We're talking about a child here. I'm done. <laughs> All right, man. Uncle Nero succeeds 100 million in sales, man. One of the most successful black owners. Shout out, Uncle Nero. Nigga, Black Daniel is on the shit. Ain't it Jack Daniels? Jack yeah, 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 yeah. Uncle Nearest is really good. Um, also, I wanted to throw out there, I had recently tried um, Jenny's Ice Cream. Y'all been there? Yeah. Okay, so they have... No, uh, I haven't. I lied. I ain't never had Jenny's. Okay, so Jenny's Ice Cream for this season right now, their seasonal flavor is eggnog flavored ice cream in, or made with Uncle Nearest whiskey. Mm. Sounds white. Go ahead. And it's so damn good. Mm. Shout like the Uncle Nearest for the bag. I don't. I don't drink. I know you corrected me that uh, earlier. I don't drink eggnog, so I tried it, and it's like it's ice cream, but it give you like that warm, like you know how you blow out after you take a you know take a sip of whiskey. Mm -hmm. It give you that warm feeling. It's perfect. I had to make some eggnog for Christmas, man. Like this, it's not bad. It's not bad. I, I don't like milk. Dog. Like I don't know why the holidays is the time for milk based liquor mixes. Cause but you ain't doing nothing but sitting around the house passing gas anyway. So true. Well, all that food on your stomach. Yeah. <laughs> true. True. Uh, Kiki Palmer announced her pregnancy. What was that on Saturday, man? Yeah. Damn, man. Who knocked Kiki up, man? Congratulations. She seems like she'd be an annoying ass baby mama. No, I agree with that. No, I think she would be really fun and laid back. Mm -mm. I, that could be annoying sometimes. She gonna be on your ass. Why are you warm the milk I, I, up? I don't agree with that, but I think that could be annoying. I think why I think, why is that annoying? I can, see her, being, I can her? see her being a nagging. I can see her being so fun that she's annoying at times. But see, you always happy, and I'm mm -hmm. not. So that would aggravate <laughs> me. Mm -hmm. Like that would get on my nerves. Like yo, give me give me a law. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. I still don't have a real nigga of the week, man. Oh, you said it was a uh, young dude, the mayor. No, I didn't. Mm. Are you taking back? Real nigga of the week. No, I didn't. I didn't yeah. give him anything. You I should. gave him person of the week. You ain't got no person of the week this week is Jalen Smith, man, an 18 year old from Earl, Arkansas. Mm. He's become the youngest mayor in the United States with the election to office. Smith says he plans to focus on public safety, housing, and building a grocery store in his town. I guess that shit is a food desert. <laughs> Shout out to Jalen Smith. Jason Smith is a African American man. Mm. Um, now the dunce medal this week goes to Van Jones, man. <laughs> I'm off a little bit. Van Jones felt the need to apologize to the Jews. 
for, for Kanye? For black people not uh, stepping up and apologizing to the Jews. What? He said, you know, everybody. Did we had, sanction this? And he said everybody had our back doing George Floyd, and he felt like our community didn't have his back. Van Jones, I don't know if you know this, but niggas was cooning for Kyrie and Kanye for for the things that they did. Shannon Sharp was one of them. Stephen A. Smith was one of them. Hell, LeBron James was one of them. Um, everybody that we know apologized to the black uh uh to the Jewish community. And another thing. If you get an opportunity, check out the interview with Jonathan Black of the ADL with Charlemagne the God. He was talking about anti-Semitism. So any questions you had about what anti-Semitism is and what the ADL is, is explained in detail by him. Uh, I won't go into much detail, but he didn't say a lot of shit for me as an African-American person in this country. But I get it. I understand. You cannot attack white Jews in that way. And I must say white Jews specifically because, like I said, there's an article. You guys can go out there and read it. It's about there's a Jews of Color Foundation. Those mm. Jews of color have not been represented by the ADL. The ADL also says it fights for freedom for all. And he didn't answer the questions about fighting for freedom for all. But I can tell you one thing. If your skin is pink and you are Jewish, the ADL will come to your defense. Mm. That's what I took from that conversation. Now, if I understood that wrong, then let's let's talk about it. But I think you guys should check it out if you got any questions about... Uh, the anti-Semitism with uh, that. And he also said that um, one point he tried to make was Charlemagne said, why did you feel the need? He's like, you know, since you guys did what you did to Kyrie, Kyrie you make, you make, uh, you oh, oh, what you did to Kanye by taking all his deals, you kind of make him look right. And he says, well, that's the tough position you're in. You know, if we don't punish him, then he continues this rhetoric. But if we punish him, then, you know, we look like we have the quote-unquote power. Mm. But, I mean, eh. That's why your sales dropped. Punish mm. is a very strong word. Yes. but Punish is a very strong word. Um, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. We're punishing you. Or are you punishing yourself? Because mm. mm. um, your sales have dropped. I got, I'm going to get a real nigga to week for Charlemagne, man. I'll tell you why. <laughs> Charlemagne this week I've been listening to The Breakfast Club A lot lately Because a lot of times I like to keep up With what's going on And sometimes I don't want to read I just want to hear it While I do work And one thing I can say is Every question That the average man Is asking He makes sure He asks to A lot of these people When they come on The Breakfast Club So I think If you haven't had a chance To listen to this conversation With Dr. Umar You should Anytime he's talking to a politician, you definitely should sit down and listen to the conversations he's having with these people because he's asking the questions that you want answered. Now, when it comes to pushback, sometimes Charlemagne don't push back as strong, but a lot of times your answers are in the answer. Um, I, I think when Jonathan Black was on there, I was mad because he didn't push back, back a lot, but a lot of times the answer was the answer. Like, you take it, you know, sometimes somebody will tell you something and it's like, you know, you you you, you can take it for what you want to take it for, but that's the answer. Right. And, and in that answer, you can get all the answers you need. So when he talked about, um, hey, we had to do this for Kanye. We had to do this to Kanye because of this. Well, in that answer, I got my answers. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't need any more pushback. I wanted pushback. I wanted him to challenge it even harder. But you asked the you asked the tough questions and you got the answers, man. So I know Charlemagne get a lot of uh, slack, a lot of flack for you know who he is and what he does. But I fuck with Charlemagne, man. So yeah, real nigga of the week, man. <laughs>
Real nigga of the week, man. Uh, other than that, man, it's been episode 200. What's that? 37? 37. Oh, speaking of Charlotte, man, did you ever see when Safari was freestyling on his show? Oh, he told him he sucked. Yeah, he was I like, nah. about it. I never he seen it. He was like, nah, he, that ain't it. Yeah, that shit he, was hilarious. He said it so clear and calm. That shit like, was so, I, out of all the times, I haven't listened to the Breakfast Club a lot, but out of all the times I actually heard him give somebody props, a listener called in and sung for them. And he said, bro, you got something. And Charlamagne never says that shit. Yeah. Mad people call the radio on rap. Like you said, Safari called, you know, rap for him. He told him that shit ain't it. Man, he told so, him that shit ain't it. I was like, <laughs> what? That shit was hilarious. Yeah, that shit is hilarious, man. He keeps it a he keeps it a thou wow, I will say. Yeah. Like he's the one guy that, and another thing about him, um, the with Angela E. Seek being gone, he's bringing up people to host on that show. Oh, okay. And it don't matter your background. It's probably gonna matter your following. But it don't matter your background. So I'm eager to see who they replace her with, man. That's what's up. But yeah, Put man. KSP uh, up there. All three of us. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to try to submit something, man. I don't, I don't know what he's going to say, but fuck it. We shoot all shots in 2023. Word, word, word. Uh, let me see what we got here. What we got here. Closing remarks. I was just about to say you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Daddy, are you on the radio?